Oh, God bless you. Praise the Lord right here in New Jersey. Um, Sister Shamira, we got your prayer request. Thanks for commenting on our preaching video of me and Lady Priscilla. Um, you say, Pastor Warren, good morning. It's been in my heart to ask you long ago about revelation on a dream. Uh, gave me, God gave me years ago. You say, I dream a lot and still now, but one dream in my mind and heart comes and I believe the Holy Spirit in you will reveal what the meaning is. Okay, well, let's look, well, let's, let me read the dream. Oh, Lord, and give it to me. Okay, you say, my dream is I was in a place all white around. And it looked like I was sitting on the eggs of this thing, like how you put money in wishing, um, I can't spell this word, you said W-R-L-L-S. There's a border there you and sit on anyway. I was talking to what believe was an angel. He was white and handsome and all in white, but looked like a man. And when he dream started, when the dream started, I and he was talking and he handed me a large scroll. And he said, this is what I want you to do. Mm, it's interesting. And I said, but what about Dewan? He said, and you said to the angel, what about Dewan? Okay, excuse the noise in the background, we outside. You said, what about Dewan? You said, Dewan was my boyfriend at that time. He then said, don't worry about him. And that was the end. Mm. I want to know about the scroll. I have had dreams of praying over dead and over the dead and them coming back and many things walking into funeral homes, etc. I wrote those dreams down and the book has been returned to me, my journal. Please, if it's God's will, can you allow the Holy Spirit to explain that? Thank you. All right, I'll try my best to explain it the way I'm viewing it in the spirit. Okay, so your dream, you say in your dream, it was in a place of all white around and it looked like you were sitting at the edge of this thing like how you put money in a wishing grill there's a border there you and sit on anyway i was talking to what i believe in the angel okay well you know the bible talks about angels we know about the holy angels and then we also um see in the book of revelations that the angels are also pastors jesus christ was talking to the angels of the, the angels of the church if you read the book of Revelations, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, uh, Jesus Christ was talking to the angel of the church, which was the pastors of the church. Okay, so angels could be pastors. Pastors are also called shepherds. Uh, I could be representing that angel because I'm a street pastor, preacher Warren. Okay. Um, or in this, this could also represent Jesus speaking through me. That's deep because God speaks through his pastors. So just like you just wrote to me just now to get an understanding of this dream, hoping that God will give me a revelation. Well, notice you were speaking to this angel and the handsome look represents the inner beauty. Okay, Jesus Christ is very handsome. Now, the devil is handsome, but he's wicked on the inside. But Jesus Christ is even more handsome because he has the inner beauty. Praise God. So me as a street pastor, the, the handsome look really don't, really represent the physical but the handsome look also represent the holiness get that the holiness of god that also represent holiness so i believe this angel here represented myself you're talking to street pastor preacher warren i just told you um angels are also called pastors pastors are also called angels okay we're not talking about god's holy angels pastors are called shepherds um the Bible talks about pastors in the book of Ephesians chapter number 4 verse 11 God gave some evangelists, God gave some prophets, God gave some apostles and God gave some pastors All right, let's go further in your dream so you say you was talking to what I believe was an angel okay, you're talking to me, watch this he was all in white okay, white represents holiness but looked like a man and when he, okay he's talking about me and when the dream started I and he was talking and he handed me a large scroll. Okay, now the scroll, if you read the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 
one. I want you to read the book, the book of Ezekiel, chapter number one. Read the book of Ezekiel, chapter number two, and chapter number three. It talks about how God told Ezekiel to eat the scroll. That's deep. Now, what is the scroll that it represented in the book of Ezekiel? The scroll is the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. When God told Ezekiel to eat the scroll, it represents spiritual. Okay, that scroll represents the word of God. Remember God told Jeremiah in the book of Jeremiah, chapter number one, he said, I put my words in your mouth. Okay, Ezekiel, when he, heard, when he ate that scroll, it represents that God was putting the word in Ezekiel to speak to the nations. Okay, God told Ezekiel to speak to, to warn a rebellious people. Uh, he had to warn these rebellious people who did not want to obey God. He was worshiping statues, doing witchcraft, uh, doing idol worship doing all kind of mess so when he ate that scroll okay the scroll represents the word of God okay now you got the word which is the Bible which is basic instruction before leaving earth makes now watch this when you eat in the natural when you eat you put it in your mouth right after you put it in your mouth what do you do you swallow it after you swallow it in your throat right you swallow it then you Digested, all for the food to be digested, it must be in your belly. Now look what Jesus said: "Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water." Okay, now hear me closely now. A lot of people got God's word in their mind, but they don't have the word of God in their heart. That's why David said, "Have thy word, have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee." There's a lot of people, folk who go to church every Sunday, hearing the preacher preach the word, and they didn't forget all about what the preacher preached. Or they shouted, or they ran around the church, or they enjoyed his moan. But when they heard the word going forth, they never digested the word. They heard the word, but they didn't let the word sink in their heart. So I want the word of God in my heart, not just only in my mouth. Because when the word of God is in your heart, now you become a doer of the word and not just only a hearer of the word. See, God is not only coming back for hearers, he's coming back for doers. So I want to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. There are a lot of folk in the church just talking the talk, but they don't walk the walk. It take more than just talking. God wants walkers. This is how you know if somebody loved Jesus, because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Love is a verb. Love is an action word. A noun is a person, place, I think. As it's describes it now. But when you say you love Jesus, then you obey Jesus. Okay, so when Ezekiel ate that scroll, it represents he was digesting the word of God. He had it in his heart. It went all in his belly. Now Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So when you had the dream about the scroll, that means God has put his word in you. God has gave you a ministry for this day and time. God is raising you up. He want to use you as a prophetess. Notice when God spoke to Ezekiel, he had this dream that he ate this scroll. That God told him to eat this scroll. Ezekiel was a prophet. But God also called prophetess. Miriam was a prophetess. Uh, praise Lord, we have Prophetess Quilla. We had many women of God in the Bible. We had Esther. We had Priscilla. Uh, my, that's my wife's name, Priscilla. Praise God. So now let's go back to your dream here. It says here. You see, dream started. I and he was talking and he handed me a large scroll. I just talked about the scroll. And he said, this is what I want you to do. So I mean, God got a ministry for you. He's going to tell you where he wants you to go, who he wants you to who God want to use you to minister to, to bring deliverance, because God is raising you up. You know, that scripture came to my mind in the book of Acts chapter number two, when Peter stood up and told the church, praise the Lord, he spoke about what the prophet Joel said. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. He said, your sons and daughters shall what? Prophesy. Different between prophesying and preaching. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions. Old men shall dream dreams, and so my handmaidens, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Now, you may have a gift of prophecy in you. I see prophetic anointing in you. Prophetess. Notice when God told Ezekiel to eat the scroll, he was talking to a prophet. God used the prophets of the Old Testament. They didn't preach no goody-goody messages back in the old day like these so-called false prophets are doing now. A lot of these false prophets now just preaching blessings and money and money 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 but they're not warning people to come out of sin don't get me wrong god can bless your money god can bless you with money but don't make money your honey you're not supposed to worship money 
the Bible declares in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, that the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, the Bible never said that money is evil. It said the love of it. God understands that we need money to pay the rent and the bills. That's why we work. So we're not supposed to worship the money. We're living in days of preachers are greedy for money. <laughs> they ask them, they're asking people for $2,000 on the work channel. <laughs> and they got more money than you and I. Those are false prophets. Okay, but when you're doing God's will, when you're seeking first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, then all these things shall be added unto you. When you got no food in the refrigerator, God is better than a smooth operator. He will provide when you got no money in the bank, when you put God first. So when you're doing God's work, he's going to provide for you. Okay, so God has chosen to be a prophetess of the day's time. He, he, he have gave you a deliverance ministry. So when you saw the scroll, it represents the words that God has put in your mouth so you can prophesy to young ladies who've been abused. To young women who got beat up by their boyfriends or by their husbands. You're going to have a woman's ministry. Uh, I'll, I'll also see a youth ministry. A lot of things you've been doing in your life uh, um, that you suffered. You've been there and done that. You got hurt. You dealt with witches and warlocks who was working witchcraft against you. You had a lot of witches that they trying to put curses on you, but the curse is not going to work if you got the Holy Ghost. And no weapon that formed against you shall prosper. But it also means the devil has tried to stop your destiny. Okay, now watch this. Let's go into about the dead part. You said you saw, you had a dream you was raising the dead. Watch this. Then said, watch this. You said he was talking and he handed me a large scroll and he said, this is what I want you to do. Okay, God is telling you what to do at this day and time. He want to use you in a mighty way as a prophetess. And I said, but what about Dewan? You said Dewan was my boyfriend at the time. He then said, don't worry about him. Okay, God is saying, don't worry about him. Okay, when you're serving the Lord, you got to forget everybody in your family. Love them, but love God more than you love your family. Love God more than you love your boyfriend. Love God more than you love your girlfriend. Love God more than you love your husband and your wife. Like, my wife loved me, but do you love God more than you love me? Yes, I do. I she love not God more than that. But I, you're after the Lord. <laughs> That's right. And she's not just saying it because she's on camera. She actually really loved the Lord. Yes. yes Praise God. Because many of you are worshiping your girlfriend. And she doing you wrong, stabbing you in the back. She's a gold digger who wants to push the trigger. Because you lost your money, now she stopped being a honey. Now she going with your brother because he got more money. Then that's not love. That's a gold digger. <laughs> you loving your man more than you love God. God said, I'm a jealous God. Thou shall not have no other God before me. So God is saying, forget about him. It doesn't mean that God don't love him. He does love him. But when God want to use you, sometimes you got to forget about your family. Because the devil will use people in your own family. Especially when you got a call upon your life. The devil will use your mother or your father. He'll use your sister and your brother or your cousins. Sometimes you got enemies in your own family that will do you worse than people that's not in your family. I got enemies in my own family. And they go to church. I'm like, wait a minute, y'all go to church and you're, you're jealous of me? <laughs> that's why Jesus said, he that loves his father and mother, sister and brother more than me is not even worthy of me. So sometimes... We in these bad relationships, and sometimes that can be a hindrance to what God wants to do in our life. Because the devil come pretty. The devil come handsome. The devil knows you like. He'll come tall and handsome with a six-pack, but he's not taking care of none of his six goods. The devil come pretty, but she's a witch. The devil ain't going to come looking ugly. The devil going to come looking fine. But tell that old witch, you may be fine, but you ain't going to be mine because you wicked and you evil. Oh, you may be handsome, but you ain't going to be mine. See, the Bible said Satan transformed himself as an angel of light. The devil not going to come looking like a werewolf, right? That's right? The demons may come looking like that. The demons even look worse than that, right? right. The devil ain't going to come looking like Frankenstein. <laughs> Frankenstein is mean and green. <laughs> the werewolf is hairy and scary, but Dracula is handsome. Women love Dracula. I come to suck your blood. He had that Barry White voice. I'm not talking about me. I'm not Dracula. Yeah, I'm not Blackula. Women love Dracula because he had the charm. He had the good looks. See, the devil will use handsome men to deceive you, but he's a wolf and she clothing. That's why you better pray before you get married. Amen. He used women like that too. So now, I'm not calling your boyfriend the devil because I don't know him. God loves him too. But the Lord said, 
if he told you in the dream to forget about him, the one was my boyfriend at the time, you said, excuse the noise in the background. He then said, don't worry about him. And that was the end. Okay, maybe you was, obviously you was in love with this man. Okay? Sometimes we in love with people that God has not destined for us. Now, I don't know the whole deal concerning in the real life, God may have destined him for you, but if God is saying to forget about him, okay, sometimes there are people in our lives who are a hindrance to us. The devil has signed people in our lives to try to stop us from getting to our destiny. Sometimes we are in love with the wrong people who don't love us back. You got to ask the Lord and say, Lord, if I'm gonna fall in love with somebody, help me to fall in love with somebody, first of all, who loved Jesus. <laughs> and now they love Jesus, now they can love you. Because if they love Jesus, they're gonna love you. If they love Jesus, they're not gonna abuse you. Because you see, when you love somebody, you don't abuse the person. It's like when you love your children, you don't child molest the child, you protect the child. Not, not molest the child because child molesters are going to hell. So sometimes we're in love with people who God has not ordained for us that the enemy can use to try to stop our destiny. God wants us to walk into our destiny. A lot of times, it don't always necessarily mean they're a bad person, but they're not on the, spir the same spiritual level that you are. They can't cover you spiritually. See, they can love you. It don't mean they love God. Oh, that's deep. Many times they can love you, but they, it don't mean they love Jesus. You can love a person, it don't mean you love Jesus. There's a lot of people who are married who don't love each who, who love each other, but they don't love God. Ah, I want to make sure I'm gonna love God more than I love my family. Some of you are worshiping your boyfriends, you're worshiping your girlfriend. No, that worship go to God. God said, I am the Lord. Whoa. And the Lord is my name, and my glory I will not give to another. Isaiah chapter 42, verse number 8. So you're going to walk into your destiny. God should eat that scroll like God told Ezekiel. He put his words in your belly, in your mouth. The word of God, get in your Bible, get into fasting and praying and say, Lord, lead me and guide me. Because there's a prophetic anointing upon your life that God had upon you since you was a little girl. And that's what the devil tried to destroy you because the devil already saw the anointing in your life. He's sitting monitoring spirits and observing spirits and, and witches and warlocks. Even on the job, you got witches and warlocks even in the neighborhood. But the Lord said, ain't no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Huh? He said, goodness and mercy huh, shall follow you. I feel the Holy Ghost right now shall follow you all the days of your life. Tell someone, don't worry, be happy. Don't worry, be happy. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself and tell yourself, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too anointed to be disappointed because I sense the devil tries to stress you out. He fights against your finances. He uses folk even in your own home at times because the enemy is trying to distract you from walking into your destiny. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You need God to heal your broken heart because you've been hurt. You've been wounded. You've been hurt. Many of you have been hurt in relationships. Let me tell you something. The devil starts out he, he starts out goody-goody at first. But then further on, when three months go by, then the evil side of him begins to show up. Now you see the evil side in her. But a lot of times the Lord got to take you by yourself, fast and pray, get in your Bible. There's one scripture I love in the Bible where David said in the book of Psalms, chapter number one. He said, blessed is the man whoa, who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's, that's for you, which includes women. Now sittest in the seat of the scoffer, or the sinners, but his the law is in the light of the law, and he do meditate day and night. Okay, what that means when God told you to forget about him, what he mean? Put your mind on him. Put your mind on God. Begin to meditate on the Lord. Meditate on the word. Let that scroll, the word of God, digest in your spirit. You know, when Jesus told Peter, feed my lambs and feed my sheep. Or to grow in God, you got to eat. Right? Yeah. Eat the word. Someone said, eat the word. He said, man shall not live by bread, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Spell the word bread. B-R-E-A-D. Take the be of bread, what you got? Bread. Red. Haven't you read that Jesus is the bread? Amen. Read is also in that word. Bread. 
read the words. Haven't you heard that Jesus is the word? That's the scroll that you saw in the dream. Now, when Jesus said to the church, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the spirit says into the churches. Okay. Uh, spell the word here. H-E-A-R. Take the H off here. What you got? Ear. Ear. So now we hear God's word with the natural ear, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The physical ear. Now, now, God also wants us to hear with the spiritual ear. What is the spiritual ear? The spiritual ear is your heart. That's why David said, have thy word, have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee, because God is judging my heart. I want my heart to be right with God. Why do you think Jeremiah said in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse number 9, he said, the heart is desperately wicked. Didn't he say it gets wicked? It's desperately wicked. It is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? He said, I, the Lord God, knows the heart. I want my heart to be right with God. So now, your heart is your spiritual ear. So when I hear God speak, I want to hear God with my spiritual ear. I don't just only want to hear God speak. I want to obey God. Because the Bible said obedience is better than sacrifice. A lot of folk go to church every Sunday, but don't obey God. They're still doing witchcraft. Still shacking, still committing adultery, still making the pact with the devil up in Hollywood. Ah, uh, I don't want to make no pacts with the devil, because when you make a pact with the devil, when that contract is up, the devil will come to collect and take your soul to hell. But Jesus said, what profits a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? So now when you hear God's word being preached, hear with a spiritual ear. Now, hear with your heart. Your heart is your spiritual ear. Spell the word heart, it's spelled H-E-A-R-T. Take the H off, take the T off at, at, at the end, what you got? Here. Here. Now, when you take the H off and take the T off, you got ear. ear. Right. So the ear is in the word heart. Now, put the, put, on, put the H back on with the T. You got heart again. So we hear God with a spiritual ear, with our hearts. Our hearts is a spiritual ear. Now, let's go back to the word heart. Rearrange it. It's spelled word. It's spelled earth. The name earth is in the word heart. So the Bible means basic instruction before leaving earth. It talks about in the book of 2 Timothy. That's a scroll. So the scroll represents the word. See? Basic instruction before leaving earth. That's what the Bible means. It talks about in the book of 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 16, verse 17. The Bible said that the Bible was written by men who was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Okay, Moses. The name Moses means drawn forth. He was also a prophet. God even put his words in Moses' mouth. Scroll. He gave Moses 613 commandments on Mount Sinai. Although we only talk about 10 commandments, but according to the Hebrew Torah, it was 613 commandments that God gave Moses, although we talk about 10 commandments. So the word earth is in the word heart. So we read the Bible, which is the scroll again. Basic instruction before leaving earth. earth. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> so that's what that scroll you saw in the dream represent God's word. He made you a prophetess. He's going to give you the living ministry. Also, when you saw, also when you was raised in the dead. Okay, when something is dead, it's deceased, right? Okay. Your past, leave your past behind. Sometimes we got things in our past that's still hurting us. Sometimes we got things in our past that still haunt us and it's hard to get over it because you've been so abused, you've been so hurt. Some of you got molested and sexually abused or verbally abused, but God said, leave the past behind, it's dead. Okay, you might have been dead. See, what it means, spiritually dead. Other words, you've been hurt. Other words, you've been wounded. And sometimes it's hard to go on when you're still holding on to things from the past. You might have fell in love with somebody who might have hurt your heart. You might have fell in love with somebody who might have abused you. So now you need God to heal your broken heart. You don't got to take no drug overdose. All you need is the Holy Ghost. Woo! Getting the Holy Ghost is better than taking a drug overdose. You don't need no dope. God is a great hope. I'm not talking about the Pope. The Pope needs a great hope. You don't need no crack. Run the way Christ is at. Get out the prayer mats. You don't need no crack and cocaine. Get in God's domain and he'll set you free from crack and cocaine. Now you can, now you no longer have to be insane. Come on. Now you can say, oh, ha, look what the Lord has brought you from. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth to those things which are before. Someone say, I press. I press. I press towards the mark 
for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Come on, give somebody a high five in YouTube land. And say, so there's, a, there's, a there's a blessing in the present. In the present. There's, a there's a blessing in the present. It reminds me when the woman had the issue of blood for 12 long years. She was, there was all kind of multitudes trying to press their way to Jesus because they knew that Jesus was a miracle worker. But what did the woman who had the issue of blood said? If I can just what? Touch the hem of his, Touch the hem of his garments, I will be made whole. Forget about the past. It means you were spiritually dead, spiritually, emotionally dead because you was wounded. That's why Jesus said, I come to heal the brokenhearted. I came to set the captive free. So what that means also to leave the past behind. What it mean by you was raising the dead, that means you're bringing people back to life spiritually. God would have bring the church back alive because the churches have became dead and lukewarm. If you're going to a boring dead church, get out that church because God is not the God of the dead. Ha! He's the God of the living. Many of you are going to a boring church where it's dry and dead. Every church is not God's church. But when God is on your heart, you the church. That means you can praise the Lord in Dunkin' Donuts. You can praise the Lord in the basketball court. You can praise the Lord in the taxi cab. You can praise the Lord in Burger King. Amen. And praise the King of Kings. That's right. We were just in Burger King, right? That's right. But we praising the King of Kings. Ah, Lordy, Lordy. Burger King needs to praise the real King. I'm not talking about King Kong. I'm talking about the King of Kings, who's greater than King Kong. I'm not talking about Godzilla. Godzilla can bow down to the real God, our Savior. Hallelujah. So and say thank you, Jesus. You don't got to take no drug overdose. All you need is a Holy Ghost. Getting the Holy Ghost is better than taking a drug overdose. You don't need no dope. God is a great hope. I'm not talking about the Pope. J-E-S-U-S. -S. Jesus is the best. He's a God of holiness. He's a God of righteousness. Whoa. You don't need no crack. Run the way Christ is at and get out the prayer mats. You don't need no cocaine. Let's get in God's domain. When you get in God's domain, it sets you free from crack and cocaine. Now you no longer have to be insane. Hallelujah. You don't need no angel dust. Us and God we can trust I will trust in the Lord many of you put your trust in the wrong people that's why you got hurt but the Lord said leave the past because God said this is your new beginning tell us when this is your new beginning some of you got fired off the job God said that's all right God got a better job just when they think they're pushing you out they're really pushing you up oh hallelujah just when they think they're pushing you out they're really pushing you up because God said, I make, the, I make you the head and not the tail. God said, I make you above only and not beneath. God said, don't worry. He said, I'll fight your battles. He said, I'm a lawyer in a courtroom. Ah! He said, I'm a doctor in a sick room. Whoa, hallelujah. So I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank I know you're trying to make ends meet, but God said, don't worry. That's what it means by, by he, that he's raising the dead. That means God going to break generational curses. He's going to bring your family back to life through you. That's also for you too. God is going to use you to break generational curses. You're going to be a woman Moses and a, and a man Moses because many of you was born in a generational curse. But tell us when the buck stops right here. Whoa, hallelujah. Just repent and be baptized. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach, I am a believer for the remissions of sins. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The buck stops right here. So God is going to bring, use you to bring people back to life spiritually. They're going to get saved in your ministry. They're going to get saved through you. You're going to bring them back to life spiritually. For those who have been wounded. For those who have been hurt. For those who want to give up. To those who are backslidden. God said, I'm going to use you to bring the backsliders back to Christ. That's what it means by you was raising the dead in that dream. And God may actually also use you to raise the dead physically. There was a dead man who was raising the dead two weeks ago in our ministry. Mm -hmm. Young man died of a cardiac arrest for 20 minutes. They put my video on where I was praying that God would raise someone back from the de dead. Young man, God brought him back to life right in the street. Because these signs shall follow you. Follow them that believe. In my name you shall cast out devils. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So it also means forgetting about your past. So when you saw your boyfriend in the past, it also represents your past. Forget those things in your past and put your mind on God. We're not saying your boyfriend is a bad person because God may want to use him too. But right now he wants your mind totally on him. Tell us when keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Stay focused. Because the enemy is trying to distract you 
a fight against your finances. But David said, ah, I once was young, but now I'm old. You're not old, we're not old yet. Right. But I never, 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 never ah, seen the righteous forsaken. Now I was seed begging for bread. So I hope I explained this dream in the right perspective. Yeah. This is the way I view it, how God had gave it to me. Mm -hmm. There's a prophetic anointing upon your life. So when you was raising the dead in that dream, that means God's going to use you to restore people back to life spiritually who has been wounded because you've been wounded. God's going to use you like that too. God is also using it. And all those out there in YouTube land, God is going to use you in the mighty way. Just say, I surrender God. If you've been wounded, you've been hurt, God can turn your tears into joy. I said, God can turn your tears into joy. Drugs can't do it, but Jesus can do it. Dope cannot do it, but Jesus can do it. You don't need no dope. God is a great hope. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when the praises go up, the blessings will come down. When God woke us up this morning, that was a blessing. Ah, oh, praise God, because tomorrow is not promised to you or me. I don't want to die without Jesus. I done preached too many funerals up in Harlem and on the Bassett. Uh, and up in the South Bronx, most of my friends got shot in the hood. Bullets flying everywhere. Been preaching the gospel since I was six years old. We only been here in New Jersey for two years. I've been preaching up in Harlem where I was born at. I done lost too many friends. Don't die without Jesus. But I've been having church on the basketball court. God been saving drug addicts. Woo! Right. God can save a drug addict and get him out the attic and make him a preacher. Amen. God can save a prostitute and make her a prophetess and tell her that the pimp don't love you. All he want to do is use you. That when you ain't got no money, now he want to beat you up. That ain't no daddy. That's a devil. I bet can't nobody love you like Jesus. <laughs> can't nobody give you joy like Jesus. The devil may try to annoy, but tell the devil, I'm going to keep my joy. Whoa. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God can save a drug dealer if he call on the faith healer. Ain't that right? That's right? You can have a conversation with God right now and say, Lord, save me. Fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, forgive me for my sins and wash my sins away. He paid the price on the cross, on the tree of Calvary. And you don't need to take no LSD. Jesus can set you free here in the year of 2023. That's right. <laughs> Ain't that right, Lady Adams? Amen. You want to say an encouraging word to her? Um, just be encouraged and... Stand strong in the Lord. Amen. Trust in the Lord. And, Trust in the Lord. and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory. H